concept map that I think I had found in one of my anatomy and physiology textbooks. And I really liked it because it gives a really good overview of, of the nervous system. So you have both a central nervous system and then the peripheral nervous system. A central nervous system consists of a brain and the spinal cord, as we're seeing here, and consists of a lot of integrative and control centers. Uh, as you can imagine, the brain plays a role in not only conscious thought, but controlling motion, movement, other things like that. We're about to learn more in detail. And then also the peripheral nervous system, which consists of pretty much everything outside of the brain and spinal cord, with the exception being the cranial nerves are still considered peripheral nerves. And we could break this down even further into the two types of nerves that we have here. We have sensory nerves that are sometimes called afferent nerves. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's blurry and it's not the highest quality picture, but as long as you can see the word sensory and afferent, that's, that's good for you. And then the motor neurons or motor nerves that are otherwise known as efferent. And we'll, we'll again talk more in depth about what this means later. And then the two subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system being the somatic nervous system and then the autonomic nervous system. Somatic meaning, you know, like body, soma, plays with voluntary muscle contraction, all that jazz. Uh, and then obviously with conduction of impulses to initiate those voluntary muscle contractions. Whereas the autonomic nervous system consists of both, um, you know, involuntary muscle contractions. And these involuntary muscle contractions, like, you know, the smooth muscle of your um, bronchioles, for example, if you have asthma like me, you have to take drugs to do that. This is uh, dictated by the sympathetic and then the parasympathetic division. And all that you really need to know for this, at least at this point in, in the uh, lecture, is that sympathetic is about using energy, whereas parasympathetic is about conserving energy. And we'll talk more in detail about what that means. So yeah, central nervous system, CNS, brain, located in the skull, and then spinal cord up in your vertebral column. And then the peripheral is pretty much everything outside of that with the exception being the cranial nerve. So just like we had mentioned earlier, um, let's just say a hypothetical scenario, and this is the one that everybody talks about, you touch something that's hot or something that's really sharp or something that hurts you whenever you touch it, okay? Maybe it's really cold, I don't know. Let's say something hot though, just for the purposes of this. So you touch that, it's hot, okay? So your afferent nerves, okay, your sensory nerves, you're gonna send something from the body, okay, in this case your hand, to the central nervous system, the brain. And your efferent nerves are sending a signal from the brain to the muscle. And so that's what tells you, oh, I need to move my hand away so that I don't do that. Now that's with um, somatic nervous system, with the body. But with the autonomic nervous system, that involuntary muscle contraction, and then we'll also the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions, which play a role in not only muscle contraction, but as we're about to see, other types of uh, activities and physiological mechanisms. So for the autonomic nervous system, there is the sympathetic and then the parasympathetic. The sympathetic uh, is thoracic and lumbar consists of what is colloquially referred to as a fight or flight response, fight for your life or run for your life. So obviously if we're doing that, we have to have a lot of uh, mobilization of energy. Um, it has a two-stage neural path along with uh, something you'll see in both the sympathetic and parasympathetic, but when the sympathetic, that two-stage neural path um, consists of second-stage neurons that are going to synapse with first-stage neurons that are located far from the target organ, and we'll explain why that means later. So if this is involved in mobilizing energy, um, a situation where you'd have to run for your life, what we have to do is we have to have uh, all the physiological settings for to, to make that the most efficient process that we can. So we're going to have the release of stress hormones, uh, protein ones and lipid type ones, epinephrine or its methylated cousin, norepinephrine, uh, glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, all this stuff. So systemically, what this is, what we're happening here is our blood vessels are going to constrict. The blood pressure increases heart rate increases, respiratory rate increases, our bronchioles are going to dilate, we're going to start to pull uh, blood away from the intestine and to the skeletal muscles so that we can run more efficiently. Um, a whole lot of processes happening here. Uh, I really just want to stress the fact that you understand that this right here, second stage neurons happening with the first stage uh, uh, neurons far from the target organ and that we use stress hormones to initiate this type of a response here. Um, the parasympathetic is actually a little bit different. Uh, it's the exact opposite in terms of energy uh, usage. This is conserving energy, resting and digesting, all that jazz. Uh, a two-stage neural path as well, but in this one, the neurons are gonna synapse first uh, stage neurons that are located near 
the target organ. And we'll talk about, at least on your exams, I really would stress that you know that the differences between these two and why that happens. There's no specific hormone that's involved in the parasympathetic response. What it is, is we're using acetylcholine and it's going to act at that target organ directly. So um, I, I'm just going to share some things with you guys. I have IBS. A lot of people have IBS. And one of the drugs that a lot of people will take for IBS is a drug that inhibits acetylcholine, but it only inhibits acetylcholine at the, the function or at the junction for the intestine, for, for that smooth muscle contraction that you have there. If I take that drug, okay, that it's an anticholinergenic, it's not going to inhibit the acetylcholine at my heart, okay? Atropine <laughs> inhibits the acetylcholine at the heart, okay? So there's a lot of different uses that we have, and acetylcholine plays a role in both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, which I think is, yeah, right here. So what you would like to notice, because this all evolved from the very similar uh, mechanisms, that acetylcholine is not a, a, it's not analogous to epinephrine or norepinephrine, it's not. Um, it's used for skeletal muscle contraction, smooth muscle contraction, uh, also used to, uh, at the adrenal medulla, which the adrenal medulla actually originated from uh, nervous tissue, from the neuroectoderm. But uh, the point that I'm making is just that acetylcholine is used in many different contexts in many different ways. And there is no uh, hormone analog for the, sympathetic, for the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, and I mean by that like a hormone that's analogous to norepinephrine or cortisol. Okay, so this is a picture here that I really like because it just illustrates that two-stage neural path. And what you'll see is uh, that I really like because it shows the relative links of the, both the pre- and post-ganglionic fibers in the parasympathetic here and then in both the sympathetic uh, nervous system. Uh